Ready, Freddy? I am. We on? We on. All right. Let me open it just so I have it. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> Sometimes that's why. People's and that's why. And that's if why. you guys can hear us and see us, just uh, let us know in Smack. the comment box. Smash some likes. Say hello. Yeah. Hi, Alex Franklin. Oh, let me turn that thing on the bottom off. It's been a long oh. time, Alex. Too long. Much too long. All right. All right, cool. cool. Um, yes. Okay, beautiful. Uh, for those that are uh, new to this group, if you want, a uh, guy's going to drop a link here and you guys can actually um, click the link and then it'll pass on your name so it doesn't show up as Facebook user in the chat here. So uh, it's helpful for us as well. And then you guys can be recognized as well when you're sharing or asking questions or anything like that. So um, yeah, just click. It's that chat.readstream blah, blah, blah link. And then you guys will have the opportunity to, uh, once you do that, your name will arise. With that, I uh, want to just welcome some of the new people who are uh, who are here with us today. This group is uh, ever-expanding, ever-growing, which is very, very exciting. Um, I don't even know how many people. Have we hit the 30K mark? I haven't really... That's shy of 29.6. So very, very close. We, we'll probably hit 30,000 here in, uh, in the next few days, which is amazing. Um, it's an amazing community of like-minded people who I think we just keep attracting a certain type of being into this work. We were just actually on a coach's training a little bit before this, and we were saying how the, the field just keeps bringing these amazingly evolved souls into this work, which is super, super exciting. So I hope if you've just found your way here, um, that you feel like this is, can be a new home for you. Mm -hmm. I know for people who do this kind of work, we sometimes feel like we're isolated and alone in our own little island. And, um, you know, friends don't understand us, family don't understand us, things like that. Um, I think it was Stuart, Stuart Wilde. No, Stuart. I don't remember his last name. Uh, they used to call it uh, Fringe Dwellers. Uh, mm -hmm. What was his last name? Stuart Wilde. It was Stuart Wilde? Yeah. Uh, so in any event, I hope that uh, if you're a fringe dweller, you find a home here in the Old Souls and Seekers community and that you plug in and talk to our team and talk to the people here and share your story because uh, this really is a home for, uh, for us all as we're doing this work. So you just get that we're not on our own. Um, before we jump into the actual training, we're going to talk today about uh, self-sabotage, which I know is something that is probably near and dear to many of us because it's something that we all go through quite a bit. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to say a couple of things uh, about Guy and myself and this the trainings that we offer here, uh, whether you just continue to come to the Tuesday Lives or you continue on with us. We actually just received this uh, reflection from one of our clients and now a coach uh, just like an hour or so ago. And she was mentioning that previously on her journey of personal development, she was always looking for coaches or practitioners who she felt were above where she was, right? Like they were farther down the path or this person had this thing that she wanted and she would keep reaching for those. And she said when she found us, um, she never felt that. It wasn't that which attracted her, 
But what she loved was that this work and what we offer here was not about acquiring more information, but rather giving her the experience of knowing herself. Mm. And so if you take this ride with us and if you take this plunge with us, whether it's through our <clears throat> live events or whether it's through our uh, Awareness Effect Academy, whatever, you know, however you want to play, I just want to offer you that Guy and I, on the Tuesdays, maybe it, it sounds a little bit more informational, but truly like whether it's at our two-day live event or any of our programs, we're not really interested in providing you more information. <laughs> now, for some of you that are like, well, well, what the fuck am I doing here then? And I want to throw this back at you and say, you know, you've been playing the acquiring information game for a long time. And this information, the way it works is it kind of ebbs and flows, right? Like you get information, you get very excited about the information. You think that you're going to implement this information in your life. You generally do not implement this information in your life. Life keeps happening. You go about your business. You fall back into all of your default patterns and cycles. And we'll talk about that self-sabotage piece in a bit here. And then what do you do? You reach for new information because that other information was no good. And now we're like searching for more, right? Whether it's a video, a book, a teacher or whatever. Right? And we just keep going down. So Dale is actually saying, oh my goodness, that's exactly how I feel. Thank you for sharing that perspective. I'm an information hoarder. How many of you guys can absolutely relate to what I'm sharing and what Dale just said? That you too, like you find yourself just constantly out there, like more information, more information, more information, more information. And while that's amazing, Okay. Take just stock, like, like pause here for a second and take stock. Has that information provided you what it is that you're actually most desiring in life? I'm not saying that it hasn't given you little tidbits here and there, which make you feel very smart or sound very smart at a dinner party or whatever it is, but like real world, has that information made the kind of impact that you wanted to make in your life? And again, after having done this for 20 years and coached tens of thousands of people, I can tell you, as Facebook user says, I too just gather information and get overwhelmed and stuck. I can assure you that the only way that human beings learn is not through information, but rather through experience. And so what we are dedicated here at Old Souls and Seekers and at Satori Prime as a whole is to put you in situations and circumstances that provide you the experience, not just the ego stroke, as Dale puts it so beautifully, of acquiring more information. Because what you are seeking is the experience of peace the experience of love, the experience of fulfillment, the experience of ease, the experience of vitality. Reading about it in a book is irrelevant. Because when someone's writing a book, good books, not all books, good books, for example, you know, like Michael Singer, we were just talking about him earlier today also, like, Michael Singer's books are a transmission because Michael Singer is actually speaking and writing from that place. He is experientially there. And the books are the transmission of that. Now, at best, those books can give you language and a map and can point to something. But you can read and reread and reread and reread The Untethered Soul. It's not going to give you the experience of finding the seat of awareness. It's not going to give you the experience of healing. It's not going to give you the experience of surrender. For that, you need to put yourself into a certain environment that gives you that experience. And that's what I really want to highlight for all of us here today. It's like, if you're here and you can notice the part that really wants to acquire more information, 
it's awesome. That part gets to be there. It's a beautiful part, right? It is, it has made you find incredible teachings and made you very, very like active and learning. Amazing, beautiful. And you get to drop all of that to actually be in the experience of life because that's when you're going to learn the most. So I just want to kind of create that as a foundation before we, we jump into anything else today. Yeah, I, I know we also wanted to, because people come in and out at different times, wanted to make an announcement for you guys too that um, our live event is coming up in 10 days time. It's on, it starts on June 24th. Uh, this week though, prices are going to jump up to the retail. So if you still want to save yourself quite a bit of money, uh, now is kind of your last chance here in the next few days to get that. We'll send out text messages and emails about that too. But for those of you guys who are here, oftentimes are are the core of you know who is following the work. So if you really want to uh, take to heart what Elon's just saying about experiencing the work, our, our two-day event is exactly that. It's not about giving you information. I think we've done 15 of them now. We have, we have had people come literally to all 15, okay? And the, and the reason for that, we usually start the program by pointing at this is because it's the content doesn't change, but it's the, the, the experience of sitting in these fields of energy and consciousness that helps people map their own awareness and consciousness in a completely new way that uh, I promise you 99.999999% of humanity is not aware of this level of consciousness. And why do we need that? How does that support our transformation? How does that support our well-being, our fun fundamental well-being? How does that support us feeling more safe? How does that support our nervous systems relaxing? How does that support authentically connecting with other human beings? And and to put it frank, it, to put it Alex Franklin, since it's our <laughs> 11th film, uh, it, it, will, it will shock you, right? Like we guarantee this will be like nothing you've ever experienced before. If it's not, you just simply ask for your money back, okay? But this, the... The, the event is not just an, an inspiring and motivational and transformative. It's, it's healing in nature. And um, there's very few events that Elon and I have ever been to that are focused on healing as, as, a, as a practical function of being human being. And here's the beautiful part. Your body naturally wants to heal itself. What you get to learn is how do I put myself in an environment where that can ongoingly happen? And then so much of this effort that a lot of us put in to psychologically try to understand ourselves or do different types of therapy, you just don't have to do that anymore. Certainly still helpful, don't get me wrong, very good for integrating and stuff like that, but it doesn't have to be the core of, of what you do. And then you're going to be like, oh, wow, I now get what all those books are trying to describe. Language will simply not get you there. It just won't. We, Elon and I sat with, with language masters for 15 years very very good work ultimately is really only half of the puzzle when you start connecting therapeutics and different things that you're doing with energy and awareness you're going to see a uh, parabolic uh changes in the way that you operate in this world and how you are relationally um you know the circumstances that arise for you i mean like really really big big changes very fast okay so uh if you want to uh join us uh intuitive mind dot live in your url browser intuitive mind dot live uh to buy a ticket or if you can't find it for any reason just let us know in the comment box and say hey send me information on the event and uh, someone from our team will reach out to you directly they're always scaring these comment boxes okay so um last week we thought it went really well we actually did a a, a transmission uh i think we'll do that again for about five minutes here so there will be like a five minute uh meditation sit where we'll go into the gnosis of the experience it was really really deep and rich last time uh a lot of people told us that last tuesday was the best training we've ever done which is a lot to say because we've been done probably over 100 of these so uh, <laughs> yeah you know easily so um Let's just talk about self-sabotage here real quick. Uh, is there anywhere you wanted to take the conversation or can I just yeah, go for it? And with it. Yeah. So yeah, it's funny. I was just on a call with our L1s and L1 is um, L1 programs for us is definitely much more in the mindset linguistic space. And we still teach it because we fundamentally know it's, it's that important, right? Like if you want to set a really solid foundation you definitely want to you want to understand how this machine works or you're always going to work against it because uh society and how we've been kind of taught to condition ourselves is a lot against our nature like we're not very good at working with our nature because our, our nature is 
a wild expression of emotion, um, intense, multi-dimensional, mystical type of experiences. And I don't know about you guys, but not many people are experiencing that. And it's not because they don't have access to it. It's because it's literally been conditioned out of them. And so like one of the things that arises for people, honestly, more than anything is they do not know how to be with their experiences. Okay. And so they come to people like Elon and myself, which, which I get it because a lot of times when you're feeling desperate or you've been in a circumstance for a long time, you're like, something needs to change. And then you think, oh, well, this person's going to help me change it. And here's the reality. Elon and I can't change your circumstances. Here's, here's another reality. Probably nobody can, you know, outside of like a you know, winning the lottery or some wealthy person coming in. And then even then it might change your circumstances, but not for the better, at least not the way that you think that it will. And so like what, what we want to look at, and this is what I've been sharing, um, even on my personal wall is like a lot of times we use the metric of our circumstances to determine whether or not, uh, something has been, is working for us or is good for us or that this work is working. And like, again, your circumstances, and we intuitively know this are actually out of your control. Even if it seems like you have a good control on, on them now, just you wait. <laughs> Some, something will be coming. You know, something's going to come that's going to knock you off the peg or make you feel overwhelmed or stressed out. And even if you built a large capacity to hold a lot in your system, it still has edges. There's still days that you don't sleep enough. There's still days that you don't get to, you don't eat. You know, your hunger, your hang, your, uh, hunger leads to hangry, right? And like stuff like that. And you have this, we all reach a point of not feeling resourced. And then like maybe your wife or your spouse says something that day that upsets you that normally wouldn't upset you. But on this day, it just drives you crazy. Again, under-resourced. It just kind of, it just kind of happens. And so a lot of what we deal with in humanity is we actually don't have patience and grace for our humanity, for our, our human experience. And so we're having an experience, but we want to have another experience. We always, it always seems like we want to have some other experience than what we're having. A lot of this work is your ability to learn how to sit with and resource yourself so that you can be with what you're experiencing in the most fluid resourced safe way possible and this allows you to move through experiences much much faster and again like this word fluidity is just here to share with you guys like in a much more fluid way and so a really good metric for for i think elon and myself elon you can disagree with me if you wish to um is that it's not about you changing your circumstances although that will probably happen because the less resistance you have internally will reflect less resistance in your outside world, which means you can get through experiences in a, in a much more accelerated way. So the metric that we're looking for is not, did your, experience, did your circumstance change, is did the way that your state of being, like how are you actually being with this circumstance, did that change? Like, are you in a stressful situation right now where you're actually not that feeling that stressed? Did your spouse say that thing, but you're like, it was really not that big of a deal today. Like it was like, yeah. okay, yeah, it kind of upset me a little bit, but I'm okay. Like I'm still resourced. I'm aligned, you know, like you show up in your business. You can, you, you can talk to people from a place of compassion and love. You talk to your place from a place you talk to yourself from a place of compassion and love. And so self-sabotage is not your circumstances. It's the way that you're internalizing your life experience. Okay. And, and the way, and, and here's the thing, however, that's happening is not your fault. Okay. It's really, really important that you get that. Whatever it is that your life experience is, how it's turning out, whether you're depressed and angry or whether you're like happy, none of those things are your fault. And honestly, even the really joyful people that walk around really happy in life, it's still a defensive pattern. Most of the time. Can't say that with absolution that I know, but like Will Smith, for example, right? We just well, had that experience with him. On the surface a wildly joyful person always has a smile on his face always seems to like see the positive and light now if anybody took the time to listen or read to his uh biography that he wrote which is honestly kind of a masterpiece and then of course the slap happened so that was kind of unfortunate because a lot of people probably would not you know would not read that now or maybe it actually led to more people reading it i'm not sure but like he admonishes in the book himself that he's he's a he's a person who's terrified of life he doesn't see himself as this the spark of light or anything like that. 
he lived in a, a very difficult relationship with his father. And it's like, and he learned that the comedy, the performance, the smiles, the this and that, like many children who are in an abusive home, you know, one is becomes a protector, another one uses comedy because, you know, if people are laughing, then no one's getting hurt. That's what he learned. Now, that led to him having a lot of quote unquote success in the way that it, it's addressed in life. And he's still very much dealing with the fact that that doesn't feel authentic to him. And then, you know, of course, let out his anger in public in front of everybody. Um, and now he's got to deal with that. And we all get to feel into what that feels like for us when, when things like that happen. So, like, you know, that that to me is what self-sabotage. It's not that the circumstances or that you're doing anything wrong. It's that you are stuck in the experience of this internal uh intelligence that happened to protect you to defend the child that's underneath this a very sensitive child what we want to learn by doing this work is not how to how to change it or make it go away or any of those things because i'm going to tell you right now it's going to depress some of you guys whatever is here now is going to be here later it ain't going away Like if, if everything stayed the same as it is right now, like circumstantially nothing changed, could you be with that? And that's kind of what we want to learn is it's not about, it's not about that aspect. It's really about coming inside of yourself and learning how do I go through this experience? Maybe for the first time in my life, because just like picture this for a moment. And I think this is what we'll do when we sit in the meditation is Think about something right now in your life that's making you uncomfortable. Okay, probably not that far away. And then see if you can drop your awareness down towards your body and locate where the actual discomfort is. Because you have the idea of what's uncomfortable, where like, I don't like the circumstance. That part's kind of like easy to navigate to and then the mind starts churning and trying to figure out what to do about that. But if you, if you lower the awareness away from the mind and towards the body, see if you can locate where this discomfort actually lives, okay? And I'll give you some clues. It, it's probably going to be something like your throat feels like it's closing or your heart feels like it's clenching or towards the solar plexus here right in the middle, right between like the heart and the stomach, feels like it's getting squished or contracting or in the stomach, it feels like that's usually down the center channel of the body, okay? And here's the, here's the thing. This is where this discomfort is. And what you have been taught is to look away from that discomfort. It's too painful to look at. It's too painful to experience. It's too painful to sit with. And so our mind has this thing that we kind of call like a spiritual bypass, which is like, oh, no, we're doing that thing that I don't like. Let's go do this other thing. Let's go run this program over here and start dealing with it in this way. And this is why people get stuck. This is why people self-sabotage. Because what you're actually looking at when you're looking down at the body is an, is an intelligent way that your body has learned to defend itself. And, and I'm using the word here body loosely because we think of body as a physical thing. But you have a mental body, an energetic body, a spiritual body, a soul body. There's lots of layers to the body. Right? So what we're tuning here into is this, this energy. Okay? The way that we change this, the way that we, we start having much more fluid experiences is by introducing safety to the body. Because what you're experiencing right now is an aspect of you that doesn't feel safe. And then the mind has to coalesce and figure out what to do about that. And it has its, and it has its ideas. These are not things that you've just recently formed. These are ideas you've had for a very long time. And so when we, when we learn how to sit with this experience, and if we actually went through the experience, I know this is a radical thinking, um, you are actually going to feel free of that experience. You will know your body won't intuitively be afraid and defend from it. And as we do this over time, and this is exactly what our intuitive mind event is about, is like how do we actually sit and create safety in the body? The more safe the body feels, the less reactive the mind has to be. And when the mind is less reactive, it doesn't get in the way of what's happening. And then these cycles of self-sabotage can stop. So, you, you know, oftentimes, again, we're just looking at like the top layer, like, oh, why did I sabotage myself? I'm so stupid. Right. But it had nothing to do with that. Like that was the that was the action that already happened. What is underneath all of that? Right. Like we got to go much deeper than what the mind is doing is this feeling of lack of safety, of lack of connection. 
a lack of fundamental well-being, a lack of resource in the body. So you can see, perhaps, if you do practices that create the fundamental well-being, that create more safety in the system, that teach you how to resource yourself, then the mind doesn't have to react and respond that way anymore to things. And then you don't have those negative outcomes that the mind is creating. Like, you know, a lot of you guys have probably been in a relationship, you know, or you've been in a relationship for a while. You know, you say this thing, they get upset over there. Then you posture it this way. You tell them, no, that's not what I meant, right? Like, and there's this posturing that happens. But the truth is, you kind of know from the word go exactly what's going to happen over the next few hours, exactly what's going to happen over the next few days, exactly what's going to happen over the next few months. Like, you've done that so many times. Like, how many of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about? And then you blame the other person again, because you don't want to look at your own experience. You don't want to look at what's happening inside. You've been conditioned to avoid. And so it's like, it's them. They need to change. That's got to change out there. It's not me. Couldn't possibly be me. And it convinces you of this. And boom, the sabotage happens again. But again, you want to notice the sabotage is familiar. It's just, it seems to be the same thing over and over again. If something in your life is happening over and over again, just as a point, just as, a, as an inquiry to yourself is like, could I be the common denominator here? And if you're really honest with yourself, you'll probably find out, yeah, it's, it's, it's me. Like it, it is hiding it from my view. But if I really go underneath all that, I really get honest with myself. I know how this feels. I know how I act. I know how they interact. And here's the thing. Your system likes that. Even if the discomfort is, is real for you and you don't like that part of it, the part that your system likes is that it's known. This outcome is known. Okay, well, at least I know how to deal with that. Yeah, it doesn't feel good, but I know how to deal with that. Like we all know if we drink too much, we're going to have a hangover, right? It doesn't feel good, but it doesn't really stop a lot of people from drinking too much and having hangovers. You know the outcome. You're still playing the game. So there's something, right, when people use alcohol to avoid there are circumstances that avoiding that circumstance is a more powerful and more alluring than the physical pain that they're going to deal with later. And if we kind of use that as a metaphor here, that's kind of what we're all doing, except it's with this defensive posturing that your mind has used. So again, I want to ask you, just as a point of inquiry, what happens when, when you no longer have that sensation in your body? And the mind doesn't have to come along to defend that aspect of yourself. Is it reasonable then to say that you're probably going to have some different outcomes in your life? You're not going to say that thing. You're not going to do that thing. And there's going to be this novelty, this newness that arises. And again, if you look at children and how they operate in this world where everything is so new and novel to them, this is why. Because these defensive patterns aren't so ingrained in the child. And so every moment, every day, every interaction, every relationship, everything that's happening for the child has this newness. There's always something emerging in their experience that's that's new. That's interesting. And I promise you, you could get that back. It, t- it, takes, it takes doing this healing work. It takes reestablishing connection and safety in your body. And, and it's here's the reality. These are very simple practices. And they still take time. It takes time to practice this stuff on a daily basis to like recondition the body, recondition the mind, because it took a lot of time to condition your mind and your body the way that it is. This didn't happen overnight. It happened for many repetitions. However, here's the beautiful part. Your mind is is a highly intelligent, highly efficient machine. When it sees that something in your in your system is no longer stuck and it doesn't have to respond to it anymore, it's not going to waste its energy on that anymore. It's going to be like, oh, that's not important anymore. And it just, it actually rolls back the program itself. You don't have to convince it. You don't have to talk to it. You don't have to do 5,000 mantras every day. You don't have to do any of that. When there's no child to protect on the inside, because this is like if we were thinking, thinking of this as the adult and the inside as a child, when the adult doesn't have to protect the child anymore, it just doesn't have to do that anymore. And it, you can just kind of move on. And again, something new will emerge and arrive in your life. And then you'll be with that experience. Anything you want to add into this? Yeah. So I just want to first and foremost, like really redefine self-sabotage. Because if you listen to what Guy was saying, and just to make it really, really clear, when we were very, very young, at different moments in all of our upbringing, whether you had the most amazing upbringing or the most abusive upbringing, it doesn't really matter. 
traumas happen. Some traumas happen in utero. Some traumas happen when you start to breastfeed or don't breastfeed. Some traumas happen before language. Some traumas happen after, right? Like there's all these different developmental stages. At every one of those developmental stages, something happened or didn't happen. And based off of that, there was a part in our system, our nervous system, that didn't feel safe. As soon as that part of you didn't feel safe, instantly the mind created a protecting, a protection mechanism, a protector, like a part that protects and a protection mechanism. So I wanna ask you this, of the self-sabotage things that you do, are any of them, and let me know this in the comment box, are any of them new to you? Do you ever self-sabotage yourself and you're like, oh my God, that's new. How did I do that? Or is the experience more like, oh, there it is again. To point to the fact that all of these things have been habituated in your life for decades, probably for most of you, as long as you can remember, whether it was school or sports or dating or trying to get a job or right. Like, oh my God, there I go again. You know, you reach that level and it's like, here we go. Same thing again. So that should be a very, very big clue. And these, this is where I want to like redefine self-sabotage. I want you just to get, it's not a self-sabotage. It's a protection. Just like when a car, for those that used to drive cars uh, that are manual, right? There's a red line on a car. The red line is this area that if you keep the engine above the red line, that engine is going to blow. That is why they, they set it there, right? So now cars have these like fuel cutoffs or, or uh, you know, like whatever the gas pedal is connected to nowadays it's not really connected to gas anymore but like it basically cuts the power to the car and dips the engine back below that is in essence what is happening in your body so you put yourself in situations where you hit the red line in your nervous system right like too much charge too much input is coming in too much too fast and the way the body basically uh digests is very much like your mouth so when you bite into a piece of food, your mouth is literally breaking that food into smaller and smaller pieces. And then that food goes in and now your you know, esophagus is squeezing in and then it gets into the stomach and all these things happen, right? So it's like, it's breaking it down into smaller and smaller pieces that your body can use. Now, if the pieces are too big and it can't, it just releases it from the body, right? But energetically, when you are hit with all this energy, Okay, the body under normal circumstances can digest that energy much like in the same way that it digests food. It can break down that energy into smaller and smaller pieces and then that energy dissipates. The problem we all run into is when there's too much charge. Then the system that is supposed to digest this energy can't digest its energy. Your body hits the red line and instantly the protector comes online and you begin the pattern of self-sabotage. But it's not a self-sabotage. It's more like, hey, I need to downregulate this system as quickly as possible because we're pinging on the red line right now. It is not safe is basically what the body is screaming right now internally. Like, I am not safe. I am not safe. Now, for some of you that I am not safe is confrontation. You avoid confrontation like the plague. You have structured your entire life to avoid confrontation. For others of you, it's anything but being embarrassed or made to feel stupid or whatever it is. Others of you, it's like, I, I don't want to be the shiny, bright one, right? Because everyone then is going to look at me. Whatever your thing is, once you hit that, protection mechanisms come, come online right away. Okay. So like I mentioned, it's the protector is kind of like the adult version trying to protect the child version. 
And this is why it doesn't matter how off, like if you read books and you've done NLP practitioners and all this kind of stuff, you know how that pattern got created, why it got created, who was there when it got created, what was said and what was not said. And you know how every aspect of your life is tied to that one moment and how you kick into this pattern, you can map out the entire thing for me. And maybe at times by mapping it out and understanding it, it's given you a little bit of space where you go, oh, okay, this is, it's okay. It's not me. It's just that thing. I'm doing that thing again. Okay. Let me, let me right. And you can kind of like move your way through it, but doesn't the part keep coming? with all of your understanding and all of your knowing and all of the like, this is how, and this is when, and doesn't it all just keep coming no matter what? So then the next question could be, okay, well, if that's what I've noticed in my life and it just keeps coming, do you really think, and I really want you to pause and think about this. Do you really think that more information more viewing this event, more figuring out when, how, what, why, where, all that stuff is actually going to eventually get you out of this process. Do you really think that that's the answer? Let's take a look. Like how long have you been down that path? And if you're at this place where you're like, you know what? it's not working or maybe it's not working to the level that you want it to work. And this is where the invitation comes in. And the invitation is that there's a little hurt boy or a little hurt girl inside that you have been avoiding for decades. And it doesn't matter how much information you get, or how smart you get, or how fast you run, or what your life circumstances are going to look like, until that little child is met by you in a loving, compassionate, agendaless way, you will keep meeting that sabotage. The protection only dissipates when the child inside no longer needs the protection. Until that happens, you know exactly how your life is going to go. And I'm not saying this at you. I'm saying this from personal experience of having done 15 years of mindset, personal development, neuro-linguistic programming style work. It was awesome. And I kept bumping up against that same protection over and over and over and over and over. It was only when I decided that I can't do any more of this, that I started to ask different questions. And my focus became more clearly set on healing these aspects of me, rather than finding ways to manage those aspects of me. So it doesn't matter what you've done before you found Satori Prime. It doesn't matter what work you've done before you found Old Souls and Seekers. I'm telling you, if you can marry everything that you've already done, the missing piece is the energetic piece. It's the piece of with awareness being able to actually turn inwards, not to try to understand from here. Mind is who does mindset work. Healing happens in the body and the mind has no access to the body. So for that, we need awareness. So if you're looking for healing versus being on that same hamster wheel over and over and watching these parts keep activating over and over and over, that's what we're about here. The intuitive mind event that I've talked about before is going to be your entrance 
into that world. It's two days where you get to sit in the energetic field and practice awareness effect practices to be able to start to turn inwards instead of constantly reaching out there. So what I'd love for us to do is I'm going to, I'm going to drop my table here in a minute and then uh, guy, maybe we lead them on like a five minute little thing where they can actually start to maybe touch some of these parts. So you really get the experience of it. I'm just going to mute this as I drop it. You're muted. Yeah. You, mute, you muted me somehow. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's good. I can mute you if you want. Go ahead. Yeah. So Elon is, um, had mentioned, you know, awareness as distinct from mind, which can be a little bit confusing because then you think to yourself, or well, aren't I aware because I have a mind? And so I want to say no. And just something to kind of explore during the meditation is, is like the awareness is that which is aware of the mind. Okay. So if we're going to identify like an I, like who I am, there is like the little I, which is like your identity and your personality. Okay. And then there's like the big I, the, the spiritual I, the spirit of I, the, it's the true connection of the all. This is how we are all connected as one. There's a, there's really only one I, there's only one awareness. And we're going to kind of explore that a little bit here. And that big I is aware of little I. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say that, that's fine. And why that can be confusing for people is because oftentimes they have merged the big I with their little I. And so they're, they're so merged in their experience that all they see is I am an object experiencing other objects. And then we have this very objectified world and you can start seeing how really heinous things happen in this world when you see other things and all you see is things and objects of things as distinct from yourself and then you're stuck in defensive patterns where you don't feel safe. And so you treat other objects, how you treat other objects when you're trying to create safety, which is how the world has mostly been organized. The world is mostly organized around, here's how we're gonna do safety. You gotta think like me, feel like me, act like me. If you don't feel and act and think like me, I don't feel safe. And so I'm gonna do some kind of manipulation or violence to you in order to make myself feel safe. That's pretty much where we're at right now, okay? And so when we begin to distinguish this big I from the little I, we can get space from our identity and personality and a, an object, object reality and get into a much more subjective view. Said another way, is a higher state of consciousness. And when we enter a higher state of consciousness, which is what our events are all about, uh, we show you and help you map that consciousness and then how do you use that to actually heal these aspects of personality and identity? Not go away, by the way. Not make them go away. Heal them. Because here's what healing means. It goes from distortion to a gift. Okay? Healing means you don't have to use that defensive strategy anymore to do that thing. Okay? So go ahead and just close your eyes. I'm going to do like a five-minute sit here, give you a little taster. And you really want to tune in less to the words and more of the felt sense. So again, closing your eyes. I know we're in a myriad of circumstances as we're listening here. And just taking a deep breath down to the body. And know that the body really can't metabolize anything unless it's in a relaxed state. So just for a moment here, just noticing the back of your eyes and just kind of softening the back of the eyes, loosening the jaw, maybe opening your mouth just a little bit. And relaxing your shoulders. And really just letting the, the, the weight of your body be supported by whatever couch or chair or ground that you might be sitting on. Just kind of letting it go as much as you can. And what we're going to work here with is we're going to 
identify where your consciousness normally sits. And chances are you experience yourself in what we call a localized or conditioned mind, as if you are the presence or the awareness that is sitting behind the eyes. It's where most people live in their conditioned linear-based, logic-based, condition-based mind. And so for just for a moment, play with this and find the space around your head. Become aware of the space around your head. Yeah, I can feel some of you guys finding it. And if it's hard to find all the space around your head, then just start with the space in front of your face and then go to the space to the right head, the right hand side of your head, and then behind your head, and then the left hand side, kind of like you're creating a, like a awareness halo. Yeah, there you go, where you guys are finding it now. And what, I, what I'm inviting you to notice is that there is going to begin to be a qualitative shift in your experience. There may still be chatter. There may still be some bodily discomforts. Something is changing. For some of you guys, you may feel like you're actually disassociating a little bit. That's okay. Nothing's wrong. Maybe a feeling of like relaxing into or kind of an empty space or a feeling of buoyancy or rest. Some people describe it as a kind of a white light. This feeling of like floating in the clouds. And so again, just for a moment, for some contrast, bring your awareness back towards the conditioning behind the eyes. And see if you can even notice that there's a kind of a, like a qualitative density in the mind. It actually doesn't feel very good to be there. And then again, shifting, unhooking somehow, some way from your mind and coming back out to the space around the head. And again, you might start noticing the body is relaxing a bit, softens. And so we're just a moment ago, you may have felt like the awareness that you are sits behind the eyes. Notice that just as easily we can non-localize our awareness and bring it to the space around our head and immediately notice that there is some kind of a shift in our experience. And some of you guys are, are experiencing this emptiness right now. And that's the basis and fundamental of most meditation Buddhist type practices is finding this emptiness. And often these practices actually stop at emptiness. So if you've been a meditator for a long time or a Buddhist for a while, you may know this emptiness quite well. Elon and I are here to tell you there's quite a bit beyond that. A lot of other qualities that we can learn about and map in our system that allow for a much, much richer human experience. And since, since we're only doing a, a taster here, I'm not going to take you into a full on process. That's what the events are for. So we can immerse you and intensively work with you on, on this kind of stuff here. We're again, just getting a little bit of a sip of what it's like to be in a non conditioned, non localized mind and how we work with it from here. We can go into much higher states of consciousness. We'll ask you guys about some of the experiences that you're having in just a moment. So noticing how your body feels, noticing how your mind might be sitting right now. More chatter, less chatter, more emotional, perhaps less emotional, perhaps. So when we used a non-localized mind, what we're doing now is we're creating a subtle distinction between our mind and that which can view the mind. Notice that you almost feel like you're sitting back and away from your mind now. And when we call, when people talk about the seat of awareness, like Michael Singer does, is 
we're beginning to touch the quality of that seat of awareness. And from here, we can watch from awareness that we are the subject watching the object that we call mind or personality or identity. We're actually not that. We're not merged with it anymore. And it's this unmerging that we're doing, this non-localized awareness that we're beginning to touch here that allows for healing to very rapidly happen in the body. Like I said, the body cannot heal or metabolize energy if it's not at rest. And the body doesn't heal when our awareness is merged with a conditioned mind. It just can't relax enough to do that. And so as we come and step back into the spacious, non-localized, non-conditioned mind, the body can begin going through a process of metabolizing energy. And there's a way to literally perceive this as it's happening in real time. And you can become very cognizant and aware of this. Just the same way you would be aware of food in your stomach that's being metabolized. No different. We're just, instead of a physical object being metabolized into energy, we're going directly to the experience of energy itself and noticing that it can metabolize. Some of you guys may just intuitively know how to do this. And that's what healing is. Healing is your body's ability to not get stuck in an experience by holding on to energy. You're actually teaching your body how to be emotionally, energetically fluid. And so things will rise, metabolize, and that's that. And the mind doesn't have to be reactive. And instead, you can actually develop a responsive mind. A mind that responds from alignment, from your true nature, from a resourced energy, from a place of fundamental safety and well-being. And just for a moment, I want you to visualize or imagine what your life would look like if the way you responded in business or your relationships or to money or to your health was not from a place of scarcity and fear, but instead from a place of resource, well-being and safety. Would your life look different if that's where you came from? And I really, really want to offer that our external world is very much a reflection of our internal world. If your internal world feels like a struggle, is wrought with resistance, impatience and pestilence, then your outside world is gonna be a reflection of that. It's gonna, you're gonna feel a lot of resistance to what is happening. You're gonna be at odds with it. You're gonna argue with it. You're not gonna want that experience. But notice again, it's not the outside experience that's really the problem. It's this inner agitation And so if we continue to look outside of ourselves for answers, if we continue to look for God outside of ourselves and spirit outside of ourselves and guidance from authority figures outside of ourselves, no one can truly know the answer for you. However, your body is intelligently designed and it was the order and the pacing of what, how everything is supposed to happen for it to heal. And so if we can turn inwardly without merging with our experiences, right? Which again, most, most therapy has you merge with your experience, experience it again, which actually creates a loop of trauma in the system versus going into higher state of consciousness, then viewing that state subjectively and liberating yourself because you can actually now move through the discomfort instead of experiencing the discomfort again. You it actually, it's you, what you're experiencing is your body metabolizing that discomfort, not you being traumatized by the event again. It's vastly different. That's why many, many therapies fail or take an extraordinarily long time to get anywhere. So just take a last moment here with yourself, just kind of checking in. How was that? And then blink your eyes open when you're ready. And if you feel like sharing anything about the experience you just had, whether it was a emotional or visual or felt sense or anything you want to share, you're, you're welcome to do that in the chat box. Again, you come back kind of slow. You might be feeling a little floaty. So just, you know, take a moment here to just imagine what it would be like to learn to actually work with your system the way that it was designed. 
not to manage, not to cope, not to manipulate, not to habituate, not to make your system do something it doesn't want to do anymore. This is so much of the reflection we got as children from our societies and schools and authority people and caregivers that it's like we, yeah, that we had to be some other way than what we were in a, in a deep experience there. And this is what's gotten us away from our true nature and accessing our very, very real gifts. Yeah, really nice when everyone's on. Just again, just noticing the quality now of the community, where you're listening from, how it feels to be in your body, maybe even where my voice seems to be coming from. For some of you guys, that's a big realization to suddenly realize that you don't have to live in this mind of yours all the time. That's just conditioning. And there are easy and accessible higher states of consciousness that are right here available for you right now. And you don't have to be a monk in a cave that meditates for 40 years to find them. You can find them in the next few minutes. So again, if you guys are, are interested in taking this, this leap, into the unknown world of uh, awareness and energy with whatever you know technologies or therapies or things that you have learned so far this is not to tell you that those are bad or throw them away in fact you will find that they those therapies get highly highly empowered through these processes and these understandings and can't explain this to somebody you got to bring someone to a higher state of consciousness then they know that state of consciousness and then you can find your way back there very easily and grow it and expand into the awareness of that consciousness. And then once you realize how to leverage that for your own healing, sky's the limit. Sky's the absolute limit. So again, if you're interested in um, learning about this stuff at a higher level, certainly you can come back on these Tuesdays. These are really just, these are shot glasses. We wanna give you like, we wanna give you the bottle, right? Um, best thing to do is to just ask uh, our team how to participate in these programs. Let me just get this out here right now. So again, ticket prices uh, are gonna go up here in the next few days, but they're very reasonable this way or that way. Um, if you want support in any way, either about this program or anything else that we do here, you just find, wanna find out more about the work. We have a whole team, Corey, Tobias, Sarah, Nikki, Jasmine are all uh, here and in this group. This is the support staff that we've developed here uh, over the last few years. They're incredible. They do this work, so they know this work intimately. These are not just people who are like selling a product. These are products of this work. And so they speak from it from a heartfelt, intimate place. If you wanna have a conversation about uh, the program that's coming up um, or any questions about what we do here, you can just type uh, contact me in the chat box below or go to callsatori.com to book a free 15 minute call uh, with those guys. And then again, you can ask any questions that you want. There's no pressure to buy on these on the first call at all. Like we just don't, we don't even let the team sell you anything. It's really just for you to kind of get some guidance. Uh, and the live event is coming up soon. So you wanna uh, take action on that as soon as possible, especially if you wanna uh, save yourself some money. Okay, um, we love you guys. We hope uh, today was uh, not just informative, but shifted something, even if you can't quite name it. And again, you can read through some of the comments here and the varied experiences that people have. And again, I want to point, that's five minutes of sitting together. Um, and Elon's and I's contention after doing work for 20 years, doing this work now intensively for about six, is that human beings, we need each other. We, we actually need each other. You cannot heal on your own. Elon and I have desperately tried. It does not work. Human beings are biologically and, spiritual, and spiritually built for connection. We literally work together as a network. And there's different people that have different medicine for you, depending on how your system is configured. And sitting with different systems is what allows you to temper the system. So if you're ready to have a really, really healthy system, we have built here uh, an entire um, experience that people can go through from how to learn about their mind, psychology, 
and how to do the cleanup work that's very very important and then how to step into this world of awareness and energetics in a really easy kind of scientific very practical way and the community is here is already here to support you so a lot of you guys are out there doing this work but you know how it feels when you do some work on your own and then you try to share with people oh i've had this experience and what it feels like when you're not received and then you contract in your system and one of the reasons we've been so adamant about building a community here that supports each other is so that when you share when you have an experience that you feel like you are being fully received and that's one of the ways that humans integrate their experiences it actually needs to be you need to see it see yourself from the eyes and the system of another and so again you have to go out and build all that stuff we've already done all that work for you and just know that when you come to our programs you're not just doing a program you're plugging into a global network a community that can support you in your healing work and that's probably one of the the biggest bangs for your buck that you get when you come work here okay Love you all. Again, if you need any support, just say contact me in the uh, comment box or you can go book in a call right now and jump the line at callsatori.com. Event's coming up soon. Thank you for your awareness and attention today. We appreciate it very much. All the best to you and yours. We love you and we'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.